somebody's here. There's this. Let's see where that goes. Okay. I always feel so weird when I start these live chats in the past because we had really sketchy internet. So I hope my internet is working and you guys can hear me. I thought I would just jump on and do a live chat because I haven't been putting out a lot of videos about every month lately. Um, due to the fact that we moved this July, the end of July, to our new Midwest homestead. We moved this July. <laughs> My daughter has me on over there. She was going to watch comments and stuff. So, um, I think I'll just wait one second. Okay, we got, it looks like we have six people. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to start um, catching everybody up. I'm in this little corner here. I don't want to show too much of the house because I want to do a um, tour pretty soon. And also just an update and everything like that. So, um, it's like July, I think it was around July 29th. We took off to our new home in the upper peninsula of Michigan. And we got to our new, our, to our new to us house. It was repossessed and, uh, we knew it was a fixer upper cause that's kind of how we roll. Um, and we bought this place. We we're so excited cause it's like our debt free homestead. We worked really hard and we were excited about it. Um, we thought we were going to be able to like do it room by room, but when we got here, we realized that was not the case. The house just needed to be gutted and, um, it was, uh, just extra dirty. You know, it doesn't look so bad in the video when you see it at first, but like actually in there, like, you know how it is just, there's a lot of underlying things and hi, just listening while I decorate my Christmas tree. Oh, I love that. I hope you're having a wonderful Christmas season. I just put my tree up and I'm actually probably one of those people that I'm going to leave my tree up for probably several weeks and maybe even to the end of January because I put my tree up a little late. I just love the lights. I love the coziness and you know, winter is just really starting here. So for me, the Christmas tree is just really cherry and I enjoy it. So I, at least even if I put my tree up, I'll keep my greenery up. So can't wait to show you guys the greenery that we have around some of my windows and arches. And I plan on doing some vlog style for you guys and then also just some slow living. And if you guys even like these live chats, I would love to kind of have a format maybe once a week that I could um, share with you guys like what I'm doing, uh, what I'm reading, what I'm eating, like just what, what games we're playing, just fun things like that. I just thought it'd be a way, cool way to connect. So, um, the, in the past, our internet was so bad. I never felt like, um, I could actually do lives. And a couple times when we were on our other homestead, it would actually cut out and it was just like such a pain. So I hope you guys are hearing this perfectly clear. That would be great to know if someone wants to say that they're hearing me. That would be great. Um, so that's what's been going on. We got here and we have literally, it, we've like, we've been so busy for the last six months in the sense of just working hard. Um, there's been lots of intentional, slow living and all that. And that's something I want to share with people is that it's not that I have this perfect life where my house is perfect and um, it's all like I'm just living this slow life with with like everything perfect because it's actually um it's a process getting this place done and it's really a mindset is taking the time for those intentional moments and those you know things I get I get sidetracked when I see people talking I love it uh, did, what did some of the people say Tosh over there I didn't catch that last comment you got to see the comments? I did for a second but they can, it sounds like they can hear me and everything. Yes. yes. Hello from Missouri. Okay, there it is. Sound is really good. Awesome. Wonderful. Great. Thank you guys. Appreciate it so much. So yeah, um, moving here has been quite the journey. It's been a lot of work. It was huge to move all of us over from Idaho all the way here. And our next video is like 40 minutes long. I hope I don't, it's a lot of footage just of us traveling some mishaps along the way, getting here and ripping 
the house to pieces and getting it ready and living in our house, kind of camping basically. You know, we got a room. We always make one room really nice that we can kind of sleep and live in and then kind of get to it. So this room that I'm sitting in right now is the little setting room, living room off the kitchen. And it is totally done except for trim and the windows. Uh, this spring we um, will put new windows in. But it's so cozy and I can't wait to show you guys on um, the videos. My kitchen is getting really close and I'm still going to show you guys that as I'm doing it. Just, um, I did, I, um, my island, sorry, I'm like too much going through my head. I have an island that I repurposed out of a, a buffet and put a countertop and it is so pretty and I cannot wait to show you the colors and what I chose and all the fun things. So the remodeling process is fun. It, it's, it's fun, but it's dirty definitely and lots of work and I feel like I'm continually cleaning and doing dust. Oh, Wyoming. Good to see you back. Oh, awesome. Thank you guys. Everybody is so kind on this channel. I appreciate how much, um, just like kindness and love and support you guys are for this channel. And I really wish my husband was here tonight. He's actually, um, putting the kids to bed and, um, I'm, I'm going to bring him on more too, because he is just uh, such a force behind all this. He helps me film. My daughter is huge. She helps me film and we both really want to get more videos out and just share and do do that more. So just, it just took us a little bit longer than we thought to get established, get the remodeling done and everything. Like today, Daniel just finished my pantry and it is so beautiful. And I'll be showing that. Just getting the pantry done feels so good because I love my pantry. I love having everything organized and south texas love to hear about your move and your channel oh wonderful love it it's great everybody all over the united states um i've been seeing that just that so many people have a heart to homestead or to live simple live intentional even if it's a little plot of land and chickens and a garden i just think it's such a great time in history to just be a little bit more independent and grow good food and just even um uh work that lifestyle into your life and establish it. Good to see you back. We missed you. Thank you. That's so sweet. I appreciate that. I missed you guys. I felt really bad lately. I was like, oh, I really, I need to show you guys what's going on. And I hated, you know, how long it was. Um, I have a whole bunch of questions here. Um, well, not really questions, just things I've been wanting to tell you guys. But I have had a reoccurring question over and over and that's about my teapots. And um, people ask me, and just even today I had another one, and they said, like, what's your favorite teapot? And what do you um, what do you use? So this is my everyday teapot. And this is, you can see it's got a chip on it and everything. This is just a black and white enamel vintage teapot. I love the shape. I use it every single day kids and how they've grown in your new kitchen. Oh, great. Yes, we will definitely be showing the kids in the new kitchen. Um, our house, which I'm kind of thinking to myself, do I share it yet or that you'll see a, a picture of it in the video? Um, is uh, We're going to show that and part of the remodeling and then we'll just keep showing that kind of stuff. I get sidetracked when I see things. <laughs> okay, so um, this teapot right here is black and white enamel teapot and I love it. This is my everyday teapot. I use it every single day. I've had this for 20 years probably. Bought it at a yard sale, a yard sale estate sale. And this lady collected all this black and white enamel and I bought a lot of it. And over the years, I've given some to friends. I've I've gotten rid of some, but this teapot is like my precious teapot. I love the shape. I just the shape is just so classic and it's just so cute. So this is my main teapot. And, you know, people ask me what kind I use. It's just a vintage, <coughs> excuse me, enamel teapot. And why I like it is just it's indestructible. And um, I use it all the time. The other teapot that I'm absolutely in love with hmm, is my big green teapot. And it's, um, I believe it's a haul. Let me just check real quick without breaking this. Mm, it's very, very, yes, it's a hull teapot. 
I don't know if you can see how large this thing is, but I fell in love with it when I bought it a couple years ago. Look at the difference in size. Like this teapot is just, I don't know if it really can show you, but this teapot is enormous. <laughs> I love this teapot when I have uh, guests over because I can make a whole lot of tea in here. I love the look. I feel like, um, I don't know why, and probably just the era, I'm not exactly even sure when the halls were made, but um, World War II is what always comes to mind when I see this teapot. I feel like having people around my table, like Wartime Farm, I don't know if you guys have ever watched that, but Wartime Farm, BBC, is a wonderful show. I love that one, and this just totally reminds me of that era. Not entirely sure if it is, but it's, it's such a sweet teapot, so. I do love my teapots. I love my coffee. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Man, scratchy throat here. Um, mm. So I thought one of the things I'd say is, um, actually before I, I was gonna tell you guys what we ate for dinner. I think it's always fun. I love hearing what people have eaten for dinner because it motivates me to like see what else um, and yes, it looks very British. I agree. It does. Um, to see what people are cooking and doing because it motivates me just even what I want to make for dinner the next day. <laughs> so I was going to share that with you and just a few little things. This is just going to be a little quick, fun, um, chat and maybe we'll do these regularly. I'm not entirely sure. See what you guys think. Um, Oh, and also the house. I wanted to get back to the house. You guys asked about it. Um, we, I've always wanted a really old house. Like I have always wanted this beautiful old rambling house. And even in the Midwest, I could actually, if you call the UP the Midwest, uh, some people have said that it is. Some people, I'm not really sure, but I'm calling it the Midwest. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but we had looked at several and online we were looking at them, but this property came up for sale and it had 20 acres and a creek and we've always wanted a creek. We really liked the area. It was a farming community. It was close to actually place where there could be jobs and stuff like that. And um, so we decided to um, go for this property because it also it was foreclosure and it was an amazing deal. And we were just like, okay, we're going to do this. But it is a manufactured home, or I don't know if, if you call it a, a double-wide mobile home. I wasn't really sure at first with aesthetics because I'm very much... Um, I've lived in a manufactured home before, and we turned it beautiful, and I knew it could be done. But um, I was like, do I really want this? Uh, is my heart set on this? And we saw the land and everything, and we were just like, yeah, I think we're going to go for this. So that's what we ended up doing. And um, yeah, and we got here. And one thing I really wanted to do is make this my cottage again. But it's a, like definitely, um, I'm very vintage, and but I can still appreciate modern. So my husband and I are just going to try to really blend some of the modern lines in this house with vintage and kind of make it our own cozy cottage. So I'm excited about that. We have a fixer upper, totally get it. Exhausting, but it's worth it, yes. And I love all the people that are telling me their meals. That is so great. Uh, I made homemade pizza tonight, and I actually also made um, stuffed bell peppers because I have um, a daughter that's gluten-free, and also I just had the ingredients for both, so I thought I'd just make a couple pizzas and then stuff some bell peppers and then have leftovers for tomorrow. So that's what I did, and um, everybody enjoyed it. So that's what I had for dinner. And um, yes, homemade, homemade pizza is always yummy, and it takes so little time. I just always feel like people need to know, make pizza at home. Like, you're literally saving so much money, and it's just so little ingredients, and it's delicious. And I can, I can roll my pizza, make my pizza, roll it out in less than, like, I say 20 minutes, but I bet you I could get two pizzas in the oven in 10 minutes if I was fast. And half the time I don't even wait for my dough to rise because kids are hungry. And I just like roll it out with my little hand rolling pin, let it rise as I'm like putting the toppings on, pop it in a super hot oven, and we've got beautiful pizza and the kids love it. So yeah, that's what we do at this, at this house. So 
<clears throat> I don't know why, but tonight my throat's a little scratchy. So, mm, I'm going to keep drinking my hibiscus tea. Um, all right, so I talked about dinner. Um, what am I reading? What are you guys reading? Um, I love books. And yes, there is a video with homemade pizza. I'm pretty positive there is. I know I have a post on it. I don't know if I have a video. Do I have a video, Natasha? Uh, you know, I, think so. I know I have a, I have a post at ForgottenWayFarms.com on my homemade pizza That's recipe. But you know what? I don't know if I've showed it in videos. It's such a simple recipe. Um, I'll try. I will come back and try to link that in the description for you guys. For at least the recipe. Um, I made this recipe even like we would put it out on our barbecue when we camped. And we have camped so many times when we remodeled and built houses. Home is wherever you are. Yes, it's so true. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is so true. And being here and making this our sweet little home is so wonderful. And uh, we just enjoyed really, ha well, having Daniel here and just putting our whole heart into like working together as a family it's really, it always, I'm amazed at how much it brings you close together, just working together and, and doing stuff. And it's, it's been good. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a few things I was going to cover. Oh, reading. That's what we we're talking about. Love note you're reading. Um, I have been reading a lot of classics, uh, in October, November, I finished Jane Eyre. I always have a couple books going, um, during the, the wintry time. I always like to reread this book, How to Huga, um, just because it's the pictures are so beautiful and the recipes are so beautiful in this book and I really enjoy it. Awesome, thank you. Yes, um, I love books and a lot of my books have been in storage for about a year and a half because we just didn't have room for it in the cottage. And so I've got some bookcases and I know exactly where I'm gonna put them and I cannot wait to get all my books out. I really like uh, discontinued books and old books, and I can't wait to um, just show you guys some of the books and some of my treasures, because I love sharing it. Oh, it's good to see you guys, too. Oh, I love Madeline's. Those are some of my favorite cookies. Um, I'm reading The Dressmaker of Auschwitz. Oh, wow, that's awesome. I love history. History is, I love history and real books and real life, and then I even love reading kids' books. I'm, you know, like Little House on the Prairie is, I have reread Little House on the Prairie, the whole set over and over. And I have several other old fashioned books that I've read over and over. I'm definitely a person that reads books over. The next read is going to The Secret Garden. Oh, I love The Secret Garden. That is so wonderful. We do a lot of audiobooks too, because we have the little ones and my husband is a huge audiobook person. He like consumes books. Especially when he's doing a lot of work, he wears his headphones and he just consumes books. Read a lot of British authors, history, European stories. Wonderful. Those are great. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I, you know, I love Jane Austen too. And um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. I think it's Georgette Heyer. And she's a lot like Jane Austen, but she wrote in the 1900s. She is an absolute riot. And her um, her language, like just how descriptive she is. She's amazing. Yes. Have you read the old fashioned girl? By... Old fashioned girl. Is that by a uh, little, the author, uh, Louisa Elm? Uh, yes. The little women love books to storage for two years. Can't wait to take a few after. I know putting books into storage is so hard. I can't wait to get mine out. I have I remember when my kids were my big kids. I have children ranging from 22 all the way down to four now. And um, I remember buying an eBay lot of books for my kids that was all about American history. And it was a lot from the New York library that they were discontinuing. And I think it was like 25 books and it was such a still. And I remember that box coming and it was just full of like, you know, um, youth books and stuff. And yes, it was Louise May Alcott. Okay, great. Yes, I love that book. Yes. And um, I remember getting that package and just feeling so rich having those books to, to read to my kids. I still have almost all of those books. My daughter might have a few in her collection, but yes, love that here. And um, 
Yes, and of course, like my cozy Christmas baking that I did with my daughter uh, is just our family recipes. I always use those during the holidays. Um, my daughter just recently said, Mom, you really need to make a recipe book that's just all of the, the dinners you make so I can have it when I get married. <laughs> I just thought that was, that was great. So um, definitely, definitely been using that stuff too. And yes, here's my book. I have it next to me. I was just trying to grab, oh, I'm getting low on power, 20%. Okay, I have, I have your Christmas recipe book. Oh, that's wonderful. I appreciate it. I definitely um, someday want to redo it because I when I put it into Amazon, I some of the things didn't come out exactly the way I like the format and stuff just because um, I was a little bit limited in that. And I would love to even make it a hardback and redo it and stuff, but we shall see. <laughs> Um, so yeah, for reading, I just, I, I can't wait to get into some more reading this winter. This is definitely the cozy time. I mean, today it was just dumping snow and it's just my favorite. I try to read a little bit every day, no matter what. My mom was really good about that growing up. She would make our lunch and then she, we'd go play and we knew it was mom's time to read a book. And she would always eat her lunch and read for like half an hour every single day. And I just grew up seeing that and I just, it's just part of my life to read every day. So uh, I enjoy, I enjoy books a lot too. So that's, that's fun even to be able to talk to you guys and hear what you guys like. I'm looking at my list, but I wanted to talk to you. Games. Oh my goodness. I know some people don't like games. Some people um, don't always enjoy that. I'm, I wasn't always a hot game person. Uh, but my husband and my kids love games, and they have definitely um, taught me to love games more and more, just for the fun of doing it together. We and it just it's so good for kids. Um, yes, yes, reading is so important. Um, Clue, I loved Clue when I was young. We do a game exchange. Oh, how fun! Game exchange is the best. The escape game from Iron Gate. It's a prison break party game. This has been like our newest find that we ordered and this is so much fun in fact like my son he's working full-time and on the weekend he comes over and well he lives with us right now but he plays at when he has free time with us at night and we have so much sorry yeah, so much fun with this game we've just been enjoying this a lot and then we've also are playing one called Loot. It's like a pirate game. It's a card game, but my littlest kids love it and it's fast paced and they have such a blast and they like to make a little bit of pirate talk while we're playing it. So that's always really fun. So yeah, I just thought I would talk about reading and dinner and games. Um, also just wanting to encourage everybody to keep it super simple for the holidays and yes, books more. Yes, absolutely. Um, the holidays, yes, and moving. <laughs> I have just put my greenery up and my tree and a few things. I love the holidays so much, but I definitely feel it's more um, keeping it simple and just keeping the atmosphere of celebration in the forefront versus like just the rush and the stress. And we just try to keep it really simple. We do, it's so funny when I look around the tree, it looks like we have a lot of presents on the tree right now, but you have to realize like there's eight of us and, we and we're all buying presents for each other. And um, oh, that's a really good game. Whoever just said that, did wasn't that the one that we have? Yeah. Is that, game. yes, that is a great game. That, yes. Um, but I think we uh, got that last year and we really enjoy that game, so. Yeah, but our, our kids, we are big gift givers. It's definitely my one of my love languages. I love to give gifts. Um, I just enjoy finding like really meaningful gifts for people. It's uh, a lot. Um, it's just special to me. I like to, and we're really simple though. I mean, like our family, we like books and games and, you know, just little things. It's always been pretty, pretty super simple here. So, um but yeah, just trying to just keep it 
really peaceful and good. I love your nail polish. How do you keep it so, <laughs> it's not so perfect. You know, I have a friend here. She's such a doll. Her name's Hannah. She does my nails. I go to her house and we have like once in a while have like a little talk time and she did my nails and literally she, I said, you have such a gift. Like she puts it on so smooth. This hand is perfect, but I always have these two fingers right here. I don't know if you see them. And I always, always peel them right there. And I actually need to um, buy this color so I can touch it up. It's just really light, but um, she did such a good job. It just, I don't usually wear it on my uh, fingers. I usually only wear nail polish on my toenails just because I work with my hands all the time. But I really love my nails done for the holidays. And so I'm gonna try to keep them. I don't know, we'll see. I'll have to tell you on how, how that works. So yeah. Um, let me see here, Daniel just finished. Uh, Daniel finished my pantry. I'm gonna be organizing that and showing it. Thank you, thank you. I do enjoy the red, the red nails are fun. <laughs> They're lots of fun. Um, I, I want to, what is it over here? Trying to figure out how I plan to show. Yes, I wanted to talk to you guys about the channel. Um, definitely we'll be doing more slow living and cozy videos, but I'm also gonna try to do a little bit more of maybe a vlog style and just showing the remodeling process. And they may, they might not be as cinematic and um, slow-mo and pretty and all that, but they'll also be showing kind of updates and stuff. I like to show a little bit of both. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's. I love the stone fireplace too. I have something really cool to tell you guys. We have a wood cook stove and we're gonna be installing it really soon. So you're going to be seeing the wood cook stove in the kitchen and it will be really fun to show you guys all about that. I've been really hankering for a wood cook stove since uh, when we lived off grid 12 years ago. And we had a really cute 1930s wood cook stove. And this time around, I didn't want an antique one just because the fireboxes are so tiny. And I, I know they work and everything, but I really wanted one with a little bit bigger firebox and a little bit more airtight. And I ended up ordering one from a really cool company. I think they're out of Montana, but they order them from like Italy. So it's actually an Italian wood cook stove. So really excited to share. It's still in the crate <laughs> because we have had to put floors in. Like we have been so, so busy. Um, and because you guys are live right now, man, I so badly, I'm gonna be showing a video really soon. Um, I so badly wanna show my gallery wall. I should, I should, I'll have to show you in the video. It, it's a little bit over there, so. But I just got doing, done doing a gallery wall with all of the photo, the art and pictures and mirrors I had in the cottage house. And it's so funny. <laughs> I like that cottage that we lived in was so, so small, like 700 square feet, that I took all of like my like beautiful art and things I love through that I put throughout the entire house. And I made like one gallery wall in this house. So I'm definitely gonna be um, looking for more stuff to decorate my walls and stuff, but not anything too much. I'm really, I'm very much a person that, um, collects. So it takes time for me to furnish things because I only get what I really, really like. Uh, yes. Teasing. I know. I know. I just like, I was going to go over there and do it. My daughter's like, no, wait for the video. We've been working on it. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to show you. <laughs> yeah. So um, let me see here. Yeah, I showed the teapots and just, yeah, the videos. I uh, really wanted to share that with you guys and um, hoping to put out a lot more videos now that we're getting more like on schedule and the house getting done and um, all of that. So, and I've been really wanting to share with you guys about how I use leftovers. I don't know if people will be interested in that, how I totally understand. I, um, I probably, a lot of you guys do this, but I will cook a lot of main meals and then whatever I have leftovers the next day, I make another meal out of it. I usually, but I have a lot of different things and little ways and little tricks that I do it. And like, I just got done filming right after Thanksgiving. So this will be coming 
pretty soon um, is I wanted to show people what to do with their holiday leftovers and how you can make so much food just with your turkey or your, <laughs> we're leftover weirdos. I love that. Well, I'm a leftover weirdo too. Um, the turkey carcass is just amazing. You can do so much with all that meat leftover and the delicious carcass makes such amazing broth and soup. And same with like a ham and ham bone and you can just make so much. So I videoed with my husband all day after, like a couple days after Thanksgiving. And I made this really cool pot pie that we just love. It's like with this really amazing crust that you put on. And then I made like a traditional uh, pot pie that we, there's some gravy left over. And then I made this huge thing of soup, but I couldn't believe how much food I got off of our Thanksgiving dinner. And we'd already been making turkey sandwiches and we'd already been doing all this stuff. And it just shows how much you can stretch your food and how much you can stretch your budget when you actually look at food and look at it in a way that um, this is actually like valuable and I'm not going to waste it. And, and it's just a, it's a really cool feeling. So I want to share a little bit more of that side too, because I like, I like that. So um, it'll be interesting, you know, interesting doing all that stuff. So um, yeah, and I think I pretty much covered everything I, I wanted to say. Hope I haven't been too rambling. Um, it feels really good to get on and just say hello to everybody. And, uh, if you guys have any questions or anything, um, feel free to ask right now. It's got, oh, that's 26 people. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. This live has gone 31 minutes. I plan on getting on for like 10, 15 minutes. Wow. I must have uh, the talent to gab. <laughs> what kind of um, turkey did you get? I got a pasture-raised organic one, and it was so dry. No, it was nice. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, um, I usually do get an organic or a pasture-raised one, um, but our new area, I do not know um, all my farmers yet. I'm learning and getting to know people. Our neighbors um, have the most amazing eggs I've been buying and especially because we don't have chickens or ducks or anything yet. Um, we just have didn't have time to get animals or anything yet, which I'm actually glad because I want to do it right. I always, now that we've done homesteading, I hate setting up just like quick. I rather do just do it right. And um, I really want to get trees in and you know, all of that. And as you saw our garden thing, that was probably the hardest thing to leave was the cottage garden. We knew when we were doing the cottage garden that we were going to move, but, um, eventually, you know, <laughs> it, it kind of came a little faster. It was too small, juicy, meaty. It was only 10 pounds. Yeah. You know, a real trick for Turkey. I don't know. This may seem, uh, kind of lame is, but it works for me is I slice a lemon, like a whole lemon or a couple lemons and just put it in the carcass. Like that's it without even like no stuffing or just a lemon. And, um, and then I really, really put, you know, like oil or butter or whatever, you know, and seasonings on top and I roast, roast it, but I don't know why, but that lemon inside there always makes the turkey really good. I've always had such good luck with turkey, chicken, anything that way. So yeah, um, not hard. Leaves too much around here in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Including rhubarb. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm definitely gonna have challenges like learning to grow in a new area. Like I am so used to growing in North Idaho. Like I know how to grow there. I know how to get good produce there, and it's a little different up here. A little colder, but um, I definitely think we'll be using all birds I think it's great yeah yeah lemons are great um we'll be probably using like cold frames and different things like that it's not really that much in some sense it's warmer because of the lakes but it's kind of got like more of a wet so yeah North Idaho is pretty it's a beautiful place loved raising my first batch of kids there is beautiful um I really do like the area here I love Lake Superior I love the farming community I do miss my mountains. I will always miss my mountains. You could always cook the turkey or say, oh, that's true. Got a puppy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> puppies can thrash things, definitely. Um, well, I guess I'll 
probably be closing this video up. I just appreciate you guys all jumping on and chit chatting. If you guys want uh, to do this more, I'd love to do a chat weekly or something like that it, um, and share books. If you guys have other ideas of things that you'd like to share, I would love to hear that. I definitely am um, gonna just do more videos and try not to say um, that's something that I'm working on. <laughs> Sometimes when you're talking on the fly, it's not easy. <laughs> Thank you. It was lovely to chat. Welcome back. Thanks for your time. You guys are so sweet. Thank you so much. There's a little shot of my Christmas tree. Little little shot here of the fireplace and the rocking chair. Yeah. Wish you guys all the best. Happy holidays. And we'll be talking soon.